Welcome. In front of me, I have the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus, which is a absolute mouthful. And today I'll show you a couple tweaks and the tricks you can do on this tablet. So, starting off, I'm gonna touch upon the dock and uh, panel, which kind of go hand in hand and uh, I would recommend choosing one to utilize for the most part, depending on what kind of user you are. So let me explain this a little bit further. Let's open up some kind of application, like settings, good enough. And as you can see, the dock will automatically show up. Now by default, with button navigation, it will permanently stay on. But if you're using gesture navigation, you can hold it and it will actually hide away. And that being said, if you're using the default launcher, the Samsung one, then by all means, uh, go with the dock or panel, whichever one you want. But if you plan to use any kind of third-party launcher, uh, Samsung basically shows you a middle finger and say, you're not using our launcher, you're not using our dock in this case. And at that point, you are only left with the side panel right here, which arguably basically does the same job uh, and has been out for longer. This is the dock was basically introduced by Google and Samsung decided to be like, yoink, we're gonna uh, call it ours, change it, and then remove it for people that don't want to use our launcher, which is just, like I said, a middle finger from them. I mean, what do you expect from a company that blocks their devices uh, from from any kind of usability uh, because you bought it for a little bit cheaper than I would like you to, for instance, when you're in Mexico. Uh, if you know, you know. Anyway, um, so, with the dock, uh, we can do a couple different things, like for instance, opening up applications by just dragging them out of it and dropping in them either on left, right, bottom, top. Oops, I did drop it by mistake. So let's try that again. So as you can see, it shows you the area where you will drop it, what will happen. So if I drag it to top, bottom, left, right, and middle as well. In the middle, it will open up as a pop-up view, which is a nice feature. And in addition to pop-up view, we have additional things that we can do, like, for instance, dragging it off the screen, and it will minimize itself. We can also completely minimize it into an app head, like so. And we can have several of these applications uh, as an app heads open up at the same time. So just to kind of showcase this. Okay, no one cares. There we go. And so I'll open up another one. Stop. Are you effing kidding me, Samsung? There we go. Uh, it took a little bit more mental fortitude than I wanted to expend on this, but whatever. So once we have a bunch of applications, you can now pick and choose out of them and you can have all of them open, as you can see. And additionally, you can still split screen. So now we have two different split screens, three different tops open, and you could go even further. But I think this showcases this kind of feature pretty well. Okay, now moving on into app pairs, which I will showcase right now. Just need to prep for this. So this is already has two apps open. We're gonna add like one more. And there we go. So now we have three different apps open. And we pull out our sidebar. You can see nothing is here. So I'm gonna close this. And now it shows up right here. Now this is only a temporary section right here. So what you will want to do is grab it. There we go. And drag it below the line. Drop it. And now it becomes a permanent application that you can quickly open up whenever you want on uh, this kind of app pair combo. So you can have a bunch of applications combined uh, together and have them all open up at once in the position that you have selected them when you uh, added the app pair to like the permanent section, let's call it, which is a pretty handy thing. You can do the same thing with the dock, uh, though I haven't really checked it out all that much because I like, my phone with a launcher uh, tells me go F yourself with the dock and I can only use the sidebar, which is kind of why I'm focusing more on the sidebar as it's more uh, versatile to a lot of people because you can use it with the uh, third-party launchers. Now, moving on, we have in the sidebar, sticking with it, a section where you can uh, open up all the applications and quickly pull them out 
just a little you know reminder because the dock has the same thing and additionally we have the little gear icon right here which allows us to add additional um tunnels to it so i'm gonna for instance add the smart select one and showcase this one so now you can swipe on the panel and it will cycle through each uh, one of the ones that you have added and additionally if you are signed into your samsung account you can download more from samsung store do keep in mind the good ones are paid which is uh, again uh, just kind of atrocious uh, they're only like a i don't know, buck but still for after you paid for a device already a decent amount you still need to spend more to utilize a feature to a little bit better extent which i kind of consider to be just unreasonable but if you find any kind of panel there that really suits your need obviously you can buy it it's not expensive like i said it's a lot of i think like a 99 cents so it's reasonable um it just i find it a little bit unreasonable that you need to purchase it okay so that being said let's move over to other options like the gestures so if we go under the display and scroll down to navigation bar you will see that we have button navigation and swipe gestures i personally like the gestures so that's what i'm going to select and it uh, will change how the device functions a little bit in terms of for instance the dock specifically so you can now hold the area right here where you had the dock and it will hide it so you can get rid of it and when you want to have it back, you can just press your finger again at the bottom of the screen and it will reappear. Additionally, we can also hide the little uh, kind of like a guide, a gesture hint as it's called. But because the way it's doing it is absolutely effing stupid, uh, which is by shifting everything down, it causes problems which majority of us don't want to deal with. So what will happen is when you're now swiping up, it won't always recognize the gesture because it's now shifted off the screen a little bit. So it really needs to be precise. And on my device, uh, my phone, I ended up sometimes swiping four times in a row from the bottom. And no, I'm not kind of like messing up the gesture. I am literally starting from the bezel onto the screen. And the device is like, uh, uh, what do you want to do? Which makes it obviously infuriating so if you encounter problems with this i recommend just re-enabling the, ge the gesture hand it is looking better without it cleaner but it causes problems which i'm pretty sure any none of us want to deal with so yeah it would be nice if samsung could fix it but i, I, I guess we're act asking for a little bit too much now moving on we have the what is it? motion smoothness that's called basically a screen refresh rate and simple and actual terms and in here we have two different options we have the adaptive and we have the standard now for a device that costs what is it 700 dollars this uh, piece of hunk of junk even though it's called fe it comes only with 90 hertz refresh rate which a little bit low but it's still better than 60. but that being said the reason I'm pointing this out is because some people might want to prioritize battery life only and maybe use this device as a uh, ebook reader, which is fine. And in this case, you probably might want to change it to standard because this will give you a better screen on time. Now, when it comes down to scrolling up and down in here, for instance, it won't look as good as it does with 90 because it will be at that point at 60 so a little bit more choppy looking and it might be a little bit of a jarring change when you go from 90 to lower one uh, it looks obviously super good when you switch from 60 to 90 uh, but i'm still giving this as an option for people that want to prioritize simply battery life only and that being said i want to point out that the adaptive option is called adaptive because it basically switches between these two refresh rates, refresh rates so it user utilizes 90 and 60 at the same time so as right now the display is just kind of stationary nothing is moving on the display so it, it is running it at 60 frames while the moment i start scrolling anything up and down or anything starts moving on the display it will switch to 90 giving you the nice smooth motion Okay, so that out of the way, let's move over to 
I think it's going to be the last option, which is the, where is it? There we go, screen mode. So by default, Samsung always sets it, sets this section to vivid. And I find this to be way too saturated for specific images like this one. You can clearly see this looks absolutely insanely saturated. Um, so I personally prefer the natural look, which gives a little bit of a more reasonable representation of colors. And I do understand that some people will like Vivid, which is completely fine. And I also know why Samsung is using the Vivid mode, because let's be honest, in a store, when you have a bunch of tablets set side by side, the one that will stick out the most will be the one that almost radiates colors away, a, basically a rainbow bar. So therefore, the Vivid mode. But for day-to-day -day use, for me, I personally prefer natural because it's not assaulting my eyes as much. So there we go. And I wanted to point out one more thing here uh, in the display section for people that might be interested in it. You can disable the edge panel and taskbar, both of them or just one of them, right over here. So if you don't want to have this show up or be visible for whatever reason, you can just toggle it off and it's now gone. And we have also some other settings in here, as long as it's enabled. And same goes for the taskbar, which you can see right here. Now we do have, or not taskbar, uh, edge panel, sorry. And we also have additional settings for it located in here that will allow you to customize it a little bit further with, I think it's here, yep. So you can change colors, uh, position of it, size, uh, transparency, and so on. So you can make it stick out a little bit more and be more visible as the default one, the white one. Uh, with transparency is sometimes very hard to see so obviously you can customize that and just to kind of showcase this let's pick some vibrant color size we can increase it uh, transparency um, let's actually less tra more transparent so low and it becomes now completely solid width we can also extend it further and as you can see it becomes basically a button visible from the side panel And obviously, it still works the same way as it did before. It's just more visible. So, with that being said, this would conclude the tweaks and tricks that I wanted to show you. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.